Namaste. So today I want to emphasize the uh, basis or foundation of the Matrix Learning Course, which is Buddha's process of becoming, Paticca Samuppada. Now, Paticca Samuppada wasn't originally discovered by Sakyamuni Buddha, the most recent Buddha, but it was discovered a long time ago by Buddha Vipassi. And Vipassi, we learn in the suttas, achieved this realization by radical reflection. Yoniso Manasikara. And that's the origin of the name matrix learning, because Yoniso means by means of a matrix. Manasikara means the attention of the mind. So when we direct the attention of the mind, which is the same thing as waking consciousness, when we direct that consciousness by means of a matrix, then everything becomes clear. What is the matrix? It is the ontology or the background network of terminology that we use to describe things. Why is this important? Well, I want to read again this very important verse from the suttas. In so far only, Ananda, can one be born or grow old or die, pass away or reappear, in so far only as there is any pathway for verbal expression, in so far only as there is any pathway for terminology, in so far only as there is any pathway for designation, in so far only as the range of wisdom, in so far only is the round kept going for there to be a designation as the thisness, that is to say, name and form together with consciousness. Now, in other videos, in, in different series, we have gone deeply into this matter, this paticca samuppada, or dependent arising, dependent origination, or specific conditionality, which is that when this is, that is. And when this passes away, that passes away. In other words, as long as the cause is present, the effect is there too. And as soon as the cause is stopped, the effect goes away too. So what is this process of becoming? It sounds very esoteric, but it's not. We are all involved in the process of becoming every minute. But because we do it unconsciously, we don't get the results we want. And in fact, we get contrary results. So if we use the process of becoming consciously with full knowledge, how it works, what is going on, then we can become anything, literally anything that we want to be. So this business of being and becoming is very deep. Huh? It is the foundation of everything else. For example, let's take a typical desire. I want a glass of water. Well, where does this come from? If we look deeply into it, we see that it deep in the usually subconscious part of the mind, in deep sleep, Shushupti, there is an urge, a desire. The desire 
is, in this case, to get water. And actually this desire is triple. It's a desire for something, a desire against something, and a kind of delusion. So the desire for is for water. The desire against is not to be thirsty. And the delusion is that I am a body that lives in a world that has things like water and glasses and stuff like that. And so I'm going to go get myself a glass of water. So what happens next? Sankhara. A sankhara is a dream. It's an urge. It's an impulse. It lives in the lower chakras. It's pre-verbal. So a sankhara is not a fully formed thought, but it's an impulse. I'm going to get up and get myself a glass of water. I feel thirsty. So I'm getting water. Then the next stage is what? Consciousness. The desire comes into the conscious mind. Jagra, waking consciousness. Consciousness is awareness with an object that is seen as external to the self. The previous two stages were completely internal. So at the stage of Sankara, then one realizes, I want a glass of water. Huh? And the very next stage is name and form. One uses names. I want a glass of water. And this is our language. See, this is where ontology resides. This is where uh, desire and impulse and urge becomes a conscious manifestation. One says to oneself in the mind, I want a glass of water. And one is aware of that thought by one's consciousness. Consciousness, remember, is dualistic because it has an object. So now we have come from internal non-duality out into external duality. And the next stage is six sense bases, right? So I perceive this thought in my mind, and then I make my body get up and go and get a glass of water. So the whole cycle of action from the deep nonverbal desire uh, not to have any bodily needs or not to be uncomfortable or uh, to have pleasures of different kinds and the delusion of seeing oneself as a separate individual, as a body. These combine and they're processed through name and form. And then one goes and does or has or becomes whatever it is according to the desire. Now, most of us are familiar with the six stages of ordinary life. Conception and gestation, birth, growth, production of byproducts like work and children and stuff like that, degeneration, and finally death. So these six stages of manifestation, how do they work? By the process of paticca samupada. And we have made quite a few videos on this topic before. In the description of this video, you will see a list of links to those videos, in case this still isn't making sense to you. <laughs> you can go and review those videos where we go into great detail on this process. But this is a prerequisite for matrix learning. Why? In matrix learning, we focus on the terminology that is used in the stage of name and form. Why is this important? Because to learn something means receiving information from an outside source, decoding that information into concepts, being able to model those concepts and see how they work, and then practicing them 
until one realizes in oneself the state of knowing or learning those things. See, now this is actually the same as the process of becoming, huh? except the name and form originates externally. It's like, I want to learn how to play the piano. So what's the first thing I do? I get a book on piano. Or I go maybe to a teacher. Either way, I'm receiving information from an external source. Then I have to practice it until I understand it. And then when I realize it, I can play the piano without any effort at all, once I've been properly trained. So this is the process of becoming, and it's also the process of learning. There is really no difference between the two. It also happens to be the process of life. Huh? And the process of death. When we leave one embodiment and go off and create another by the same process. So one should understand this process of becoming to be the same as the process of learning, of gaining a skill, of becoming something that you want to become in order to achieve your desires. If we want to attain self-realization, we have to become a sage. We have to become enlightened. We have to become self-realized. So this is also a process of becoming, which is, is a very special process of becoming because it leads to the end of all becoming and then simply being. So this process is very technical and it has to be understood rightly or one can waste a great deal of time chasing shadows and trying to attain something illusory if one doesn't understand the terminology involved. So understanding the terminology of the scriptures and of the wise men who teach enlightenment is the absolutely required step on the path of self-realization. For example, since we're talking about the Buddha's teaching, the Buddha's Eightfold Noble Path begins with the stage of right view. So how do you get right view? Well, there are a couple of stages before it, and one is hearing, and the other one is confidence. When one hears this teaching and then gains confidence in it that one has actually understood it, then when he begins to implement it, he is said to have right view. So this is the prerequisite. This is the very first stage on the process of self-realization given by the Buddha and actually given by all great sages. For example, the word Upanishad is broken up into Upa, close, huh? nearby, Ani, come and sit down, a shot, sit down and listen. So come close, sit down and listen, and you will hear this teaching. Then you have to duplicate the teaching. You have to memorize it. This is the ancient Vedic way. You have to make a copy of that teaching internally. And then you have to figure out what it means. You have to define all the terms. Then you can model the teaching, and this is called understanding. Once you understand how the teaching works under the hood, the mechanism by which it works, then you can begin to implement it, and this is called contemplation. And finally, by sufficient contemplation, one realizes the teaching, and this is called realization or metacognition. So these are the four stages of learning, duplication, understanding, contemplation, and metacognition. And these are the four stages we're going to be going over in this course of matrix learning. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.